there friends, in this video, I am going to show you how to post one bedroom to Airbnb. And from there, you can create a custom link and advertise your room on many different sites, Facebook, Craigslist, etc. For many years, I owned a massage studio and spa, but I had a car accident. <laughs> in 2016 that crushed my wrists and shook around my head. So I live with concussion brain, but I also was unable to do massage. I had numb hands and you can't do that with numb hands. So it was like God whispered in my ear and said, rent some rooms out girl, you have six of them and you don't need all that space all on your own. So that's what I decided to do. Now I'm going to show you how to post a room on Airbnb. Remember, you don't have to only advertise with Airbnb. You can create a custom link there and direct people to that link to see all the pictures and the information in one place. So here I am, all ready to do business. What you need to do first is to create your own account on Airbnb. It's really easy, it walks you through, but when you do log in, it's going to assume that you're getting ready to travel. So that's where you'll be. And this default page is San Diego and it starts with experiences. That is something we may talk about in a future video. If you're interested, please let me know in the comments down below and that'll let me know you wanna hear a little bit about experiences. You can do experiences without listing a room on Airbnb. So we're here. You're going to switch to hosting, click here. It's going to take me to my page, but you're going to get something like this. You want to go to the menu first and go to create a new listing. All right, I'm creating new. I go to next, the property address. They will not give this property address to anyone until they book with you. So I'm going to do uh, 2300 South La Pan. This is not my property. We're doing a boarding house, so this is a home. Now you wanna select the property type, bring this down. It's a house. You go to arrow things down. It's a residential home and we're not renting out the entire place because we live there. We're creating this boarding house. It is just a private room within that house. Is it a dedicated space? Yes, it is. You do not have any of your things in there. However, you can rent out rooms that have some things in there. You just kind of want to lock them away or put them where guests don't really see. I have a trunk in one room and just some things in there. So I can put, yes, it's primarily for guests or no, I keep some of my personal stuff. When you bring them into the house, you explain where you do not want them to go. Since this is one room, we only want one guest. Do I allow other guests? I do, but I have a $10 a night charge for an extra guest. How many beds can the guest use? One. In description, you can write that you have an optional air mattress or cot if you do. So here with the sleeping arrangements, they have one bed. Add a queen or a king if that is what you have. Done there. Common spaces. If you're letting them use a bathroom, a laundry room, a kitchen, outdoor seating, you need to put that in this area. So maybe you have five common areas that you are going to allow your guests to go. And this just, if you are allowing other guests to be in these common spaces, I do not. But again, this is your listing. You make it your own. How many bathrooms? They get to use one and it's not private. It's shared. Where's the place located? This is in the United States. It is a home, so we're just letting this auto fill. 
some things will and that's always a, just a little extra perk okay this area will do a pinpoint so people can know roundabout but again they're not going to get this little pin until they book with you if it isn't right you can hit adjust and move this around however you need to we're going to hit save that's where we like it yes that's right amenities are essential here towels and sheets you want to have those or maybe you don't a friend of mine that i did coach she has them bring their own sheets cooking basics i allow people to cook and i do supply coffee and oils and spices things to get them going but i do not supply all the food i cook several meals a month to get everybody together so my guests can get to know each other it's kind of nice i supply that desk i have an iron hair dryer shampoo hangers do you offer heat i hope so in my area it's kind of cold i don't offer breakfast but i do have coffee and tea and i can explain that without checking this in another area i have a fireplace one of my rooms has a private entrance and I offer air conditioning because it gets hot here in Colorado. So what spaces can a guest use? You pick. You might not want them to do laundry in your machines. Machines are pricey. Sometimes they're kind of temperamental and you don't want your basement or area to flood. You pick from here. Does this space have accessibility features? And that would mean for handicap. I'm just going to hit next because I don't. Then you get to upload your pictures. Your pictures and reviews are going to be what people look at first. So pictures stand out, okay? What I want you to do before you take pictures, make sure the room looks really good. Turn on all the lights and then you, you wanna take those pictures. Obviously the room being clean is number one. Your first picture you upload is going to be the cover photo. You might want it to be the outside of your house. I have garden photos, I have sunset photos, because that's a big part of what is in my space. But I'm for this, I am just going to start with the bedroom. So I have a nice bedroom, clean it up, make it look great. In the description, because it has ad caption, you wanna put, this is a king size bed. I have a TV in this room. I have a desk in this room. Maybe a mini fridge or a microwave. People like that because some people don't want to come out and socialize with everybody else. So in that description, take time to do that, to list all the fun things you have within the room. You want to show them a picture of the kitchen that they're going to be using. A picture of their bathroom is important maybe the living room might be next oops i already did that one so i'm going to trash that one delete it see how easy it is it's great and i'm going to go with number four which is outdoor living so it's three that is my living room if i want my living room to just continue the flow of the inside spaces, I just drag and drop it and it will put it in the order I want. Once you have all that done, you're ready to go on. Next, describe your place and maybe the neighborhood. You might put parking is right out front. You will have a large, let's just go um, bright room with a desk and high speed Wi-Fi. Oops, not speak. Speed Wi-Fi. Sorry, I'm a little dyslexic, but put everything here. And then you can add more details about your neighborhood, what the rest of the house looks like, you will have options later on to change things around. 
you will want to keep updating your property as Airbnb changes its rules or household goods change. As you are earning extra money, you might remodel your bathroom, take new pictures, get them up there. You can up the price, but if you still have all those old pictures, it's a little harder to. Create a title. Okay, we want to have something really special here. When you are creating the title, get creative. I'm going to put Creekside. We don't have rivers here in Colorado. Creekside. Creekside view. Here you get to see where Airbnb will require things for people to book with you. They need to have a valid email address that they're communicating with Airbnb. They also confirm the phone number and your payment options. So you know these people that are coming in with credit cards, they are viable. Before they're able to, if you choose instant book or even ask you to book, they have to check something that they agree to your house rules. They need to tell you why they're in town. Sometimes people might be working from your home and if you don't work at home, maybe you don't want that. You still have the option to say, I don't think my place will work for you. Let them know, they have to let you know how many guests are coming. I have it for one and if they're choosing to have two, then they let you know and you get to let them know that there's a fee for an extra person. Confirm the check-in time if they arrive within two days. You can have additional requirements. You might ask a set of questions about cooking, if they're going to use your backyard, if you think, if they think they're going to be watching the TV or gaming. Gaming's important because you might not have enough gig speed for that and your internet company could just let them do it and then charge you later. You don't want anything unexpected. So remember that. You have your rules. You might have quiet hours, no shoes in the house. You add additional rules. And while you write it in here, this could be, this doesn't have a certain amount of characters. You can write everything here, but you can choose if it's suitable for children. If you want pets, smoking on the property, if they're allowed to have guests over for dinner or a dinner party, all of this you get to choose. If they have to climb stairs, we're going to, you put in a little description here. They might just have to go down the stairs for the laundry room. Potential for noise, pets that live on the property. Here you can describe very gentle kitty, um, parking, all these things you need to get down and put that out there so the guests know what to expect. These are again review the requirements. You didn't add any additional requirements. I didn't, but I would add those. But this is and this is where you would do it. Next, here is how guests will book with you. Only the qualified ones. Anyone who wants to book needs to confirm that they read your rules, provide those payment details, and they have to tell you about the trip. Why are they there? You set controls for who can book. And this is where they might need a government ID or positive reviews from other people. Right here is where you request those things. Once the guest does book, you get notified, you get an email. Congratulations, so-and-so booked with you. You want to open that right away and take a look at what they wrote to you. Because if it makes you feel uncomfortable, you need to talk to them right away and they are able to cancel the reservation if they have reservations about the things that you need or you let them know things that are going on here that they don't like. They get a full refund if they cancel it right away if you pick strict, which I do. And you want to pick how strict you are with cancellation policies. That will come later on. Here, 
Um, this tells you you're protected. You have 24 seven customer support and you want to achieve to be a super host because they get right back to you. You have a million dollars host guarantee. If they destroy your place, this is a guarantee. Take a look, read it thoroughly. Successful hosting starts with accurate calendar. So if you're going to be advertising on Facebook pages or Craigslist too, once someone books with you, those people you may be interviewing directly. They might meet you at a coffee shop or out front of your home. You might let them in the home to see the room. That's all to your comfort level. But this calendar, you need to update it because if you forget, and someone and you're on instant book and someone books you with Airbnb, they're going to be a little upset if you keep changing things around. So don't forget that. And you'll check here. Don't worry. I got that. No problem. I'll keep it accurate and up to date. Two questions to get started with your settings. You are new to this. And honestly, you're not sure yet how often you want to do this. You want to get a sense if you're comfortable with it and get a feel for what it's like to earn some extra cash. I suggest to have at least one day before someone can check in. And that would mean if they book the same day, um, you might have to scramble around to clean the room. The last person you didn't get a chance. So at least put one day in between. Check-in time, three to what? Are you a late nighter? I am not, so I give them till eight o'clock at night. That is their check-in time. My checkout time is at 11. Let me go back, because I didn't see that. I don't see it here, but there, there's a lot more that you will see when you update so after you do all this, preview it, and then decide what you need to go back to do after you publish it. Here is how far in advance can people book with you. I like to give people a full year because I get a lot of people that are going to school and they know what their schedule is going to be like in a year. And they are just people who take care of things way in advance. I do get people that do that. Okay, a minimum of nights, my laws and coding in my neighborhood, I have to do a month or more, 28 days or more. I do 29 because that way my guests won't have to pay additional taxes to the city of Lakewood. I don't do anything for maximum. I leave that open because I get young people who stay with me for a year or more. Here is when are you going to be available? Say you put this up and you want to start this weekend. You're only going to block the rest of today and tomorrow, but they can book for Friday night, Saturday. My one house, I put it up and within two to three hours, I was already booked. I only had one room done. The young man was there all alone. Okay, your pricing. Once you go back to update things, they'll allow you to set a price for the month. And I have four different rooms and each room has a different price because of different things that are in the room. And you'll understand that as you build rooms. Maybe you're only going to have one room. That's fine. But here they give you tips a base price for Denver, they're telling you would be $35. So my base is what I really want to get. I might want more than that. I might have a lot more amenities. You don't have to go with these tips. You understand the value of your place by looking at other rooms in your neighborhood, see what they offer in the room and see what their prices are. They're telling you maybe the minimum you would go would be $24. I don't, I don't go with their thing. I want 35. So the base is my minimum price. My maximum price are telling me to go to 105. And if I have 
smart pricing on, they know when the city of Denver is really busy and they're going to up my price accordingly. Yeah, use base price only. That's what I picked, 35. So next, if you wanna offer since you're brand new, 20% off for your first couple bookings, go ahead. I don't recommend that, okay? I don't add a special offer, but don't add a special offer. Length of stay. We're not doing weekly. They, I would offer the monthly because in filters, people want to see places that offer a discount for the whole month. So even though that's all you're doing, you fill this out. I would not do 49. I don't think that is fair at all. So at 25% off, this gives me almost $800 for the room. Your rooms are special if you make them special. And this is a fair price for a whole month when you have it fully furnished, you have a place for them to cook, do their laundry, you're supplying all that, you heat the room, you air condition the room, you deserve this amount. You can always adjust this later on if you're not getting bookings. So based on your settings, here's what you can expect. You're available starting this weekend, and as long as they meet the requirements and this person agrees to your house rules, they can book. You can email them and again say, Please remember, refresh your memory on my house rules. So this one, your guest is giving you a message. You message them back and let them know. I'm so excited to welcome you to my home. I look forward to meeting you in a couple days. You welcome your guests. You will coordinate either a host check-in and in a video I'll attach either on this side or this side you'll see how you can welcome guests or put a lockbox out and they can do a self check-in you get paid a couple days after check-in you'll get notice I have direct deposit into my account and Airbnb takes 3% off for their fee that's all 3% so if that doesn't work for you, up your rates a little bit. I think 3% is fair for how much business, how many bookings they have given me. They charge another 10% to the guest when they book. So that might have you lower your rates. You get to choose. Okay, hosting responsibilities. It's telling you to make sure of your local laws. We already talked about that in another video you want to do that first thing. This is learn about um, responsible hosting. They have a lot of tips and helps you will find on the platform. So that law looks good. Now it's really populating your whole profile and it says you're ready to publish. This is how easy this is. Walks you through everything. Have your glasses ready so you can see it all and get a good idea. If this video was helpful for you, please give me a thumbs up. If you have other questions or concerns, post those in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out in any way I can. I will have either on this side or this side, self check-in versus host greeting check-in. And there'll be a picture of me either side to subscribe because if you're looking to build, I'm building with you. I will help you in any way that I can. Just ask down below. I'll see you in the next one. And thanks for watching. Ciao. Make your pictures, your pictures,